Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are checking out NVIDIA's latest attempt to excite gamers, and this time it is with a mid-range GPU. I'm sure you're familiar with the GTX 1660 Ti at this point. Probably comes as no surprise. It's been rumoured for quite some time now, and the recent leaks basically confirmed its existence, down to the exact specs and pricing. That said, while not surprising, the release itself does seem a bit odd. This is because NVIDIA's been pushing their RTX series as the holy grail for gamers. In reality though, it's a whole lot less miraculous than that and perhaps that's why we are seeing them trim down the Turing GPU and cut off a bit of the fat to create the 1660 Ti. And after all, the RT and Tensor cores, they're basically useless on a mid-range part, so anything lower end is going to be completely useless. NVIDIA tells us they've dropped these architectural features in order to provide a sub $300 US Turing GPU. And while that's fair enough, and I also doubt many of you will miss the ability to enable ray tracing or DLSS. Today's video sponsor is PCBWay. If you're after a custom PCB for your next project, look no further. They make high quality PCBs at affordable prices. Right now, new members get a $5 bonus, which covers their first order of 10 one to two layer PCBs. And they also offer an assembly service. Furthermore, right now, all PCB assembly orders enjoy free shipping worldwide. So check them out. Link is in the video description. Although Nvidia has trimmed off the fat, we do still get the new SM units featuring dedicated cores for processing FP32 and integer operations simultaneously, as well as FP16 processing at double the rate of FP32, while also including the latest advancements in programmable shading. The new SM units also feature enhanced caches for increased capacity and bandwidth. Compared to the RTX 2060, the GTX 1660 Ti packs 25% fewer CUDA cores, but because it also drops the RT and Tensor cores, the die is 36% smaller. Then, when compared to the Pascal-based GTX 1060 6GB, the 1660 Ti's die is 42% larger, but only packs 20% more CUDA cores. Of course, as I just mentioned, the cores have been upgraded and are now much wider. This new model also comes with 6GB of GDDR6 memory clocked at 1500 MHz for a DDR clock of 6GHz and a data rate of 12 gigabits per second. Using a 192-bit wide memory bus that results in a peak throughput of 288GB per second, which is a 14% reduction in bandwidth compared to the RTX 2060, but 13% higher than the 1070 and 50% more than the 1060. Given the specs, we're expecting the 1660 Ti to offer GTX 1070 Lite performance at the $280 US price point, which would finally be some good news for gamers. For testing, I'll be looking at performance in a dozen titles, and then hopefully sometime soon, I'll be checking out 30 plus games. Also, the focus for this video will be on 1080p and 1440p performance. Before we get into the results, a few quick notes on the test system. The test system included a Core i9-9900K clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of DDR4-3200 memory. As for the drivers, Adrenaline 2019 Edition 19.2.2 for the Radeon GPUs was used, and then Game Ready 418.91 WHQL for the GeForce GPUs. Okay, let's get into the results. First up, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and crikey, the GTX 1660 Ti looks mighty impressive, matching the GTX 1070 Ti with 87 FPS on average at 1080p. This allowed it to basically match Vega 56 and therefore destroy the RX 590 by an almost 40% margin. It remained lethal at 1440p as well, again matching the GTX 1070 Ti and beating the RX 590 by an impressive 41% margin. Forza Horizon 4 was actually one of the first games I benchmarked, and I was shocked to find the GTX 1660 Ti so close to the RTX 2060. We've already seen that the Turing GPUs aren't that much faster than their Pascal counterparts in this title, and in the case of the RTX 2070, it's actually a little slower than the 1080. That said, the 1660 Ti had no trouble keeping up with the GTX 1070, and as a result was just 5% slower than the 2060. We see much the same at 1440p. In fact, here the 1660 Ti was just a single frame slower than the 2060. I don't expect we'll see uh, many more results like this though. Keeping frame rates above 60 FPS and just cause 4 certainly isn't easy, but even so, the GTX 1660 Ti is now by far the best sub $300 US GPU in this title, averaging 73 FPS at 1080p, making it 14% faster than the RX 590. Similar margins are also seen at 1440p. Here the 1660 Ti matched the GTX 1070, and this meant it was just a few frames slower than AMD's Radeon Vega 56. 
Then we see the GTX 1660 Ti slaying in Resident Evil 2 with an impressive 108 FPS on average, and this placed it between the 1070 and 1070 Ti. So, solid result there. It maintained this position at 1440p, and in a strong title for AMD, it was still 11% faster than the Radeon RX 590. So, again, another very solid result here for NVIDIA's new sub $300 GPU. Hitman 2 is a bit odd at 1080p. That said, this is mostly because we are looking at a GPU bottleneck scenario at this resolution. So moving to 1440p gives us a better idea of how these GPUs compare. And here we see the 1660 Ti roughly matching the GTX 1070, making it just 12% slower than the RTX 2060. I think it's fair to say the 1660 Ti is going to be a very popular choice amongst Fortnite players. It's by far the cheapest way to push well past 100 FPS using the higher quality settings. It also proved very capable at 1440p, pushing well over 70 FPS throughout our test run. Once again, you're looking at GTX 1070 Lite performance. Metro Exodus is an exciting new game that we've already covered in depth on the channel, but Obviously, this is the first time we've been able to test it with the GTX 1660 Ti. Performance at 1080p is respectable, and again, we're seeing GTX 1070-like frame rates. The same performance margins were seen at 1440p, and here the 1660 Ti matched the 1070, making it 30% faster than the 6GB 1060. It seems that Rainbow Six Siege always provides us with interesting results, and today's review is no exception. For the most part, the GTX 1660 Ti mirrored the GTX 1070's performance, but here it shatters it, and in fact it manages to even edge out the GTX 1080. Much the same was seen at 1440p, here the 1660 Ti matched the GTX 1080, making it 16% faster than the 1070, and 58% faster than the 6GB 1060, while it was just 2% slower than Vega 56. Here we see our updated Battlefield 5 testing saw the GTX 1660 Ti come in just behind the GTX 1070 at 1080p, but with 90 FPS on average it was a good step up from the GTX 1060. Then at 1440p we see much the same. Here the 1660 Ti was again slightly slower than the GTX 1070, though with just 2 FPS in it you could comfortably say they provided the exact same experience. Not only that, but with over 60 FPS rendered during our test it provided highly playable performance in Battlefield 5 at 1440p. Interestingly, the 1660 Ti wasn't able to match the GTX 1070 World of Tanks at 1080p, here it was 7% slower. That's by no means a big margin, but still it's rare to see a new Turing GPU coming in behind the 1070. It did however manage to beat Vega 56, and therefore was almost 40% faster than the RX 590. Then at 1440p we again see very similar results, Vega 56 does creep ahead for the average frame rate, but is down for the 1% low result. Still at 35% faster than the Radeon RX 590, the 1660 Ti more than gets the job done. As a new ultra popular battle royale title, we have of course included Apex Legends, and here the GTX 1660 Ti spat out 123 FPS at 1080p, making it a whisker faster than Vega 56, and a whisker slower than the GTX 1070 Ti. It was also just 16% slower than the RTX 2060, so pretty good result there. Moving to 1440p, and here we find much the same. The 1660 Ti is found positioned between the 1070 Ti and Vega 56, making it 9% faster than the vanilla 1070, and 55% faster than the 6GB 1060. Wrapping up the gaming benchmarks, we have the new Far Cry title, New Dawn. The results are basically the same as what we've seen previously when testing with Far Cry 5. Not overly surprising given that it's the same world, environment, game engine, and so on. Anyway, here the 1660 Ti matched the GTX 1070, making it a little slower than Vega 56. Then at 1440p, as we've seen numerous times already, the margins remain very much the same. That being the case, we again see the 1660 Ti matching the performance of the GTX 1070. Now, when it comes to power consumption, the GTX 1660 Ti pushed total consumption to just 271 watts, making it very efficient. Basically, you're getting GTX 1070 light performance for an 8% power saving for the total system. I'm not going to bother comparing that with Vega 56, you can see the difference for yourself. Plus, Vega 56 has to be modified before it can be placed on a power graph like this. You know, standard out of the box stuff, undervolting it till it's running on lemon juice. Sorry about that sarcasm, but in all seriousness, this is really what you can expect from Vega 56 and 64 out of the box. Same goes for Radeon 7. As for the operating temperatures, the MSI GTX 1660 Ti Gaming X model that we use for testing was whisper quiet, even after an hour of heavy load. 
The fans only spun up to around 1500 RPM, and this allowed a peak GPU temperature of just 66 degrees in a 21 degree room. Very impressive stuff from a relatively small graphics card. Incredibly, when overclocked, the card maintained basically the same operating temperature and fan speed, running just a single degree warmer. That said, the operating frequency was only boosted by 4% on average, but we were able to massively increase the memory speed, increasing the data rate from 12 gigabits per second to 15 gigabits per second, and this was the maximum speed the MSI Afterburner utility would actually allow us to hit. So despite just a 4% increase in core clock, the 25% boost in memory speed allowed for an 8% increase when testing with Far Cry New Dawn. I know, not exactly mind-blowing stuff, but that's a pretty typical overclock for a modern NVIDIA graphics card. Okay, so we've got a pretty good idea now of how the new GeForce GTX 1660 Ti performs out of the box, how the MSI Gaming X model uh, overclocks, how efficient it is, all that stuff. But now what I want to know is how exactly does it stack up against previous generation products such as the GTX 1060, the 1070, and as well as the new RTX 2060, and then some GPUs from AMD, you know, the Radeon RX 590, Vega 56, and all that. So let's go do that now. The GTX 1660 Ti is actually a pretty decent upgrade over the GTX 1060 6GB, at least depending on the title. Still, on average, it was 38% faster at 1080p and 40% faster at 1440p, and that right there is a big performance boost and certainly justifies spending the $280 US in my opinion, especially if you're looking at getting into 1440p gaming. Upgrades aside, you wouldn't even entertain purchasing a GTX 1060 6GB anymore. I mean, you shouldn't have been anyway as the RX 580 was much better value, but point is, the GTX 1060 is now very much a dead product. Anything north of $200 US and I wouldn't give it a second look. As you're no doubt expecting based on what we'd seen previously, the GTX 1660 Ti is kind of the new GTX 1070, but of course at a lower price point. Sure, the performance does vary a bit in a few titles, but for the most part we are looking at a single digit performance difference. We see the same 2% performance difference at 1440p, the 1660 Ti performed well in Rainbow Six Siege, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Apex Legends, but as I said overall the performance was much the same. It's interesting to note that the 1660 Ti is 20% cheaper than the RTX 2060, but at 1080p was just 12% slower. You could of course argue that the 2060 is better value because of those RT and Tensor cores that enable ray tracing and DLSS, but we'd scoff at such a claim. For those of you wondering, the 1660 Ti was again 12% slower at 1440p, so let's move on to check out a few comparisons with some AMD Radeon GPUs. Okay, so compared to the similarly priced RX 590, the GTX 1660 Ti was 24% faster. So 24% more performance for an 8% price hike. Not only that, but worst case, the 1660 Ti was still 7% faster than the RX 590, and best case, up to 46% faster. So it's clearly the better buy. I've been saying it for months now, expect RX 590 price drops. And while we have already seen $20 shaved off the launch price, you can expect that figure to grow now that the 1660 Ti is on the scene. The margins were much the same at 1440p. Here the 1660 Ti was 25% faster. So like I said, very similar to what we saw at 1080p. Finally, we have Vega 56, which typically sells for $400, and sometimes you'll come across a crazy sale where they drop down much closer to $300. I think there was a bargain sale recently for around $330 US. Anyway, the GTX 1660 Ti was just 7% slower on average, and even if Vega 56 was to sell for $330 again, the 1660 Ti would still be 15% cheaper, making it the better value buy, not to mention much, much more efficient. Okay, so we're getting close to wrapping this up, time for our cost per frame analysis. Given everything we've seen so far, you'd expect the 1660 Ti to fare very well here, and it does. Basically, you're looking at a similar price to performance ratio as that of the Radeon RX 580, which is incredibly good news for gamers. This is because the 1660 Ti is an entire tier above the RX 580, so for it to deliver a similar cost per frame is absolutely great news. With a similar level of performance to a Vega 56, the GTX 1660 Ti comes out at a saving of 25% per frame. It's also 19% more cost effective than the GTX 1060 6GB. The least impressive comparison can be made with the RTX 2060. Here it was just 9% more cost effective, which is still an impressive margin, and I'll talk more about this in a moment. 
Nvidia released the first Turing-based GPUs back in September of last year, and in my opinion, it wasn't until they released the RTX 2060 that we got a well-rounded model that was worth buying. To be fair, the RTX 2080 Ti, it's an incredible beast, and I really love gaming with it at 4K, but it's also stupidly, and I mean absolutely stupidly overpriced. $1,300 US, yeah, it's not quite that good. If you'll allow me to be blunt, the RTX 2080 was a snooze fest. The same can be said about the RTX 2070. In fact, the 2070 was even worse as it was effectively eliminated by the 2060 just three months after its release. Then for those of you that hadn't yet nodded off, AMD chimed in with some elite level ASMR with their Radeon 7. Yeah, GPU releases over the past six months have been pretty underwhelming. That said, the GTX 1660 Ti is the first GPU release in some time that I've come away feeling really pleased with what we've been given. As I've already said, we're getting GTX 1070 Lite performance for a slight price premium over the GTX 1060 6GB, and while I know many of you would have preferred it to be priced at $250, without any competition from AMD at the moment, I think this is a pretty good result. Speaking of AMD, this release puts them in a rather tough spot. Previously, the RX 580 was the obvious sub $300 option, but now the choice is much more difficult, and frankly, I'd go with the 1660 Ti. It's only $80 more and offers higher tier performance. In today's recently released games, the RX 580 is more of a 1080p solution, whereas the 1660 Ti can be used for high refresh rate 1080p gaming or 1440p gaming. It's also much more efficient, and I expect all AIB models to run cool and quiet. As for Vega 56, well, unless you can find one for $300 US or less, it's really not worth buying in my opinion. So again, AMD's GPU division really is in a tough position, and fingers crossed they can pull a rabbit out of their hat with Navi later in the year. That would certainly benefit all of us. In the meantime though, the GTX 1660 Ti is the new sub $300 king, and I'm not at all concerned about the lack of RT and tensor cores. Frankly, I'd much rather a GTX 2080 Ti with some extra CUDA cores, I'd certainly be more compelled to spend $1,300 US on that. Anyway, great to see a new GPU worth buying, and I was very impressed with MSI's Gaming X model. The card looks really good, it's nice compact design, it runs cool and quiet, and it's able to overclock the GTX 1660 Ti to the max. The only question left to answer now is, how much does it cost exactly? Hard to say right now, and pricing is likely to be a bit all over the place for the next few weeks, but with the RTX 2060, 2070, and 2080 all selling at the MSRP, I expect the same will be true for the GTX 1660 Ti before too long. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Please feel free to let me know what you think of the GTX 1660 Ti down below in the comment section. Uh, let me know if you think the review was, well, if it echoed your thoughts. Do you think it's a good product for the money? Uh, so yeah, very keen to hear your thoughts as always. And for those of you that were hoping for more than 12 games to be benchmarked, uh, this was more of a sort of a product review slash review of the GPU. Anyway, I will have a 30 plus game uh, benchmark. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow, I will be benchmarking my backside off as you watch this video. Uh, so I'm trying to get 30 something games, maybe about 35 games, include a lot of the newer games like the new Far Cry, uh, of course, Apex Legends. We've already looked at that though. Uh, there's a few other new games as well that will be included. But anyway, that is coming. Hopefully tomorrow, maybe a day or two, there is a lot of work involved. It depends whether I pass out or not. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the work we do at Hyrule Unboxed, then consider supporting us on Patreon. That really helps us out and helps us to create uh, in-depth benchmark content and all the other things that we do on the channel. Anyway, I'm your host, Steve. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.